Welcome to the next in our series, Awesome Admin Tech Talks. Our platform edition today is focused on giving users access. Tech Talks is a series of short webinars that are deep dives for technical practitioners. We value you, our customer, and want you to continue in your Splunk journey. Our experts help create these best practices, and we want you to leverage them in your daily role. Hello, I am Greg Daly. My role in Splunk is working as a technical marketing manager, TMM, for platform technologies such as Splunk Enterprise, Splunk Cloud, and Data Stream Processor. I am excited to share with you the information about giving users access or how to give the right users access to the right data. Today's agenda includes the following regarding giving users access, giving the right access to the right users, securing your data to meet security and privacy rules. We're also going to give you a demo showing you a couple of the techniques about giving users access and then show you a couple additional resources to continue your journey with your Splunk infrastructure. Powerful admin capabilities make it possible to manage Splunk at any scale. This means no matter how much data you need to analyze, Splunk can help. And we have the tools for admins to keep your environment secure and healthy. First and foremost, Splunk system and data admins have a very important role of setting up Splunk to be used by a wider organizational audience. This involves a series of initial configuration activities as well as ongoing management and monitoring of the use to make sure admins and users get the most out of Splunk's search capabilities. As an admin, you get data into Splunk from your desired sources, configure indexers and forwarders for your unique architecture. Once set up, you can add, manage, and create your own custom applications, as well as monitor usage and investigate user issues on an ongoing basis. As the admin, you make sure that your users and data is always secure by managing users, roles, and the data they have access to. Additionally, your own data management, analyze and structure data for use by a wider Splunk audience. Let's break this into a few buckets that admins should focus on getting up to speed on these various user management issues. Splunk has numerous methods of authentication and tools to compartmentalize data, allowing you to give users the right access to meet security and privacy requirements of your specific organization. This can be done through roles, users, tokens, password management, and authentication methods. The flexibility in the methods of authentication is to support every environment and every operating requirement. Giving users access. First, authenticate your users. Authenticate with Splunk using the default logon which is the embedded authentication system in Enterprise. Integrate with your existing LDAP, SAML, or MFA environments, or get an API token for a REST call, a CLI process, or a mobile app or Apple TV presentation. You, securing your knowledge objects can be done at different levels, such as event types, tags, lookups, field extractions, workflow actions, and save searches. You also have the ability to do field level controls and masking. This flexibility allows you to manage the user access through many large number of indexes and the ability to assign access across any indexed field. You can set up permissions across your standard roles or create custom roles for your environment. Only allow Splunk users, non-Splunk admins, the specific permissions required to perform their work. In a huge word of caution you will hear a couple of times today. Be very careful when assigning roles to the can underscore delete permissions. 
Recovering deleted data can be a real chore and restricting the can underscore delete permissions is essential to avoiding common user mistakes. Allowing improper can underscore delete assignments can lead to a very problematic disaster recovery scenario. Please use it with extreme caution. Splunk also allows for the granular security of all your produced knowledge objects, including event types, tags, lookups, field extractions, workflow actions, save searches, alerts, reports, and dashboards. When creating the knowledge objects or by editing the permissions, you can decide which users have read or write permissions and in which apps the object can be displayed in. You can set up permissions across your standard roles or cust create custom roles for your environment. Only allow users, non-Splunk admins, the specific permissions required to perform their work. And again, be extraordinarily careful with the can underscore delete privilege. Field level controls and masking. Splunk has the capabilities to apply granular role-based access controls. Splunk has the flexibility to manage user access to large number of indexes and indexers. Splunk's most granular controls is the ability to assign access to any indexed field. So if you need field level access control to protect privacy or business information, Splunk's granular field-based access is the right choice. Let's jump into the demo portion of today's Tech Talk, where we will review several methods of giving access controls to users while protecting your data and the privacy of your information. Here are a few examples of user access controls. Now we will walk through the roles in Splunk. Roles are the groups in Splunk which contain a certain set of capabilities which controls the actions a user assigned to this role can perform. Users are assigned roles which control their capabilities and their access. By default, Splunk contains four roles, admin, power, user, and can underscore delete. As you can see here, the admin role has the most capabilities. Power allows the user to edit shared objects such as save searches, alerts, tags, and complete other similar tasks. The user role is able to create and run its own searches, create and edit event types, and complete other similar tasks. The can underscore delete role allows users to delete items based on a keyword. However, and once again, be very, very careful when assigning this role. Improper assignment of a can underscore delete role can lead to data loss. If you want to create roles with different capabilities than the default roles, don't edit the default roles. To create the role, simply click New Role, then enter the name for your role, and select which capabilities you would like to, the role to have. You can inherit the default roles from the default roles, or select capabilities yourself by simply clicking on the capabilities. You can also limit which index the role has access to the search restrictions, and the resource limits. In Splunk's UI settings under Users and Authentication, you will find everything you need to set up your users so they can authenticate and log into Splunk. Splunk comes with a default login, standard in Enterprise. But you can easily configure Splunk to use your existing enterprise LDAP or SAML environments for username and password validation. 
Your LDAP or SAML groups can also be easily mapped to Splunk roles. If you're not using LDAP or SAML groups, it's no problem. You can still set up your LDAP and SAML users with roles individually. Please see the reference docs at attached at the end of this presentation. If you have groups that you would like to use REST or HEC interface, you would provision tokens for these API clearance here under Settings Tokens. You can provision multiple tokens with multiple configuration expirations for your development groups. Check out our last awesome admin tech talk on getting data in if you want a primer on developing against Splunk's REST interfaces. You can also limit which apps users have access to. For example, this could be used to only allow your SecOps team to have access to your enterprise security app. App access limitation are controlled by your roles. To control who has access to a particular app, go to the Manage Apps in the upper left-hand corner, find the app that you'd like to set permissions for, and click on Permissions under Sharing. This allows you to select which roles have read-write permissions to this specific app. If you wanted to make these permissions global, simply select All Apps at the bottom of the configuration screen. As with every Tech Talk, we would like to point everyone to all the resources available to the Splunk community. Training and certification. Become a Splunk certified admin or architect. docs.splunk.com. Be sure to check out our online docs for securing the Splunk platform. This will outline all the details you would need to set up users, roles, tokens, or LDAP or SAML integrations. Docs.Splunk is your reference library to everything you need in using, configuring, and managing your Splunk environment. Watch Splunk Live. And as a reminder, Conf21 is coming up, and Splunkers, partners, and Splunk Trust members will go deep into admin capabilities of your Splunk installations. And also, user groups. User groups happen all the time, and literally around the globe. Attend a user group meeting in person, or virtually, for deep dives into interesting Splunk-based technical solutions. And as always, let's continue our conversation on community.splunk.com. Sign up or sign in if you have an account already and start getting expert advice and tips on Splunk issues like giving users access. In answers, create or join in on the discussion, research ideas, search for solutions, request enhancements, and vote up the best answers provided by Splunkers, Splunk Trust members, and Splunk users just like you. Thank you for attending today's Tech Talk on giving users access. I hope you gained some valuable information today, and I look forward to seeing everyone in the next Awesome Admins Tech Talk. Have a great day.